Hey friends, welcome back to the program. My name is MJ. Today we're reacting to Eminem and Sway's Kamikaze Interview Part 3. Wasn't gonna do this, but you guys kept requesting it, so hopefully you guys are getting ready to get started. The video is 15 and a half minutes long, so I'm not gonna talk too much. If you're ready to get this video started, definitely give me a thumbs up, and let's press play. Jesse Reyes is featured on this project. Mm -hmm. Young Jessie up and coming Reyes. star. She's on two songs. Okay. How did you find Jesse Reyes? Um, I was coming home. I got home one night from video shoot action, and she was on TV. It was a Seth Meyers show. Mm -hmm. ah. She was doing that song Gatekeeper. Hmm. And I was like, who the fuck is this? Because wow. her voice to me was so crazy. Hmm. So I rewound it. I was like, oh shit. I gotta check her out. So I went down the wormhole of looking up shit. I was like, yo, I really wanna fuck with this chick because she, right now, I'm, I, I, my personal opinion. First of all, sorry, two things. Every time I hear the word rewound, it sounds so funny. Like rewind in the past tense. Sounds very funny. The second thing is the way he says fuck with this chick is so funny that I don't know, it just came out funny. I think she's gonna really blow up. Mm -hmm. That's my personal opinion. I've seen people, very talented people, not do that. Right. But I think that I would put my money on her that she will absolutely be huge. Wow. But I don't even know if, like, necessarily in the pop world or anything like that. I don't yeah. feel like she does pop music. I feel like she, she just she comes from a real place and she writes her own shit. First time I got in the studio, wow. there, I played her a couple beats and she just started writing to one right there. Mm. Laid a hook. Mm -hmm. Good guy. That's nice. Like, oh shit. So she wants to hear this girl. It's a good guy. It's a good yeah. guy. Yeah. Mm. The one she's singing at the end. Yeah. There's a nice guy, good guy. Good guy. And the reason that that happened is because, oddly enough, she had already had a song called Nice Guy. Hmm. She had that song, right? Okay. So I think that was the last day I was in LA. I came back home and what is he wrote to that one. And then I was like, I want to write to the other one too, but they're both saying nice guy, good guy. Right. It's too much like, similar. I'll make it like it's kind of one song. Uh, Dre's all over this project. Dre's um, input was okay. all over it. He corrected him real quick. For sure. He, he felt like me and him had couple discussions about the last album and one of the things that he said to me was like he was like he he hit me up one day he was like yo I don't like how motherfuckers are talking about your album hmm. and he had heard revival right yeah him and Jimmy Ivey had sat in there and listened to most of the songs I had done at Rick Rubin's studio right and so why is that a topic of conversation maybe one of you guys can enlighten me why is it why is it not I don't like your album? Why is it not I'm proud of the work you did? It's one or the other. Why is it I don't like how people are talking about it? Why does it matter how people are talking about it? Based off that reaction, I, th I think Dre was a little confused too when that happened with Revival. Um, probably not more so than me, but, but we had a conversation um, earlier in the year and I think I had only had one song hmm. by that time it, it, it this was like January yeah I had the one song and was thinking about releasing it and then another song got when I got back to Detroit recorded it like okay now I got two songs I might as well do a fucking album and that's kind of how that came about but Dre also <sighs> there's a couple songs that he kind of deaded them just yeah. because he didn't have a good reaction to him and he also felt like one of them was going a little far. I wonder what song it was. Is it by the <laughs> Looks the way he wants to know. What does that mean? Like, how far did it go? It, 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 uh, it went, it definitely went too far. Mm. Oh, so even he agrees. Too far. I feel like Kamikaze was the place where if you were ever going to go so-called too far, this is where it would be. Well, you don't know, Sway. BET verse for the rap cipher. Yes. And in it, you covered a lot of content that was relevant to the world we live in today. Yes, he did. Some folks want to sweep under the rug, and mm -hmm. this is my own personal opinion. Conversations we have every day on, on Shade 4 or 5 on Sway in the Morning, we talk about, you know, the injustice, policies, right. prejudice, 
we talk about discrimination, all mm-hmm. of these different things, whether or not we, we're in the middle of a race war that is mm-hmm. trying to be perpetrated by people in power. Definitely. Not a war in the sense where people are going to pick That up. race war is a, is, is a real thing. I was just talking to my brother-in-law about that. Like, that's a real thing. And it's definitely like, I, I feel like it's being manufactured. Are there people that are prejudiced and they're bigots and all of the um, kind of things? Yes. But are people directly trying to put uh, people of different races against each other? Definitely. It's happening. Uh, it's a shoot at, well, maybe. Shit. Right. Mm-hmm. But in terms of um, psychologically, the whole nine. So when you did that first mm-hmm. on the BET cipher, what I thought why it was necessary, King Crooked had a song called I Can't Breathe, where he talks about man, we can't just be the only one saying this. White right. people shouldn't stay quiet. Mm. White people shouldn't stay quiet. Never heard I that. I can't tell you how hard that one hit me. Oh. It was to the point where I'm like, this is how strong I feel about something. Right. Why don't I say something? I gotta put it in the right words. Right. You know? And I saw shit where it was like, oh, these are these are not new subjects. They're new to Eminem and you know, okay. that kind of shit. How did you respond to that reaction? You did. You got backlash for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did. Especially when you I got backlash for the Trump cipher. Yeah, right. And, you know, it is what it is. At least, at least when this shit is all said Sit and done, down. Mm-hmm. maybe I can just be on the right side of history. Right. That's why it's gonna matter at this point. You got people dissecting the bars and going, "Oh, this shit is trash. It's not even that good." Mm-hmm. And, and that's not what it's about. Right. You're missing the whole point. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to say this also to my fan base right. who might have voted for him. Mm. A lot of people in, in my fan base probably did. Yeah. Yeah. At the time I did the cipher, I realized after it was all said and done that maybe, maybe I should have just attacked him. Mm. You, said, I, I draw, you drew that line in the sand, maybe yeah. you should have not done that. You should have reworded it and show empathy toward Well, that's him. what I realized after I was done. This. I love how introspective he is, though. Like, even with the interview, if you watch, like, when, he, when Sway asks him questions, he's not just throwing answers out. He's really taking time to um, think about what he's getting ready to say, which is important. You know, I, I, it really shows a person that understands the responsibility of words you know like um of that's of that's the word i'm even trying to say the power of words you know because once you say them you've said them so he's really if you didn't in the past he now definitely knows like he knows the power of it and he's picking and choosing his words very wisely i felt because it's like okay this is this is like this is backfiring on me and i don't care i don't give a fuck if if that's what happened and hurt my sales i don't care about that mm. I care about Keep it real. the message I'm trying to convey. Mm-hmm. Why you felt the need to stand up though? Mm-hmm. What was that for you as Marshall? What made you Because <laughs> Come on, because Sway. I was just watching it every single day. I watch a lot of news, right? Right. The thing that pissed me off the most, mm-hmm. that really set me off to when I started going crazy with the pen, is I'm like, the Kaepernick thing. Mm-hmm. And when that shit happened, everybody it kept set everybody up. It kept changing the narrative. Mm-hmm. You fucking, ah, uh, I, I, I can't, I can't, um, I don't want to get into this whole Trump thing anymore. Why are they getting him robbed up? The ringer, Asian Orange, sending a secret service uh, to your house. Did the secret service really come to your house? Mm-hmm. I want to know about that too. came to my studio, yeah. Okay. And they asked, they had, they were just basically asking me questions about my lyrics to see if, what the intent was behind it. Oh, get you know, out, no, no, get actual out. Actual threat, or just expressing myself so so that really happened wow that's crazy yeah right exactly now, what we're seeing too because colin kaepernick was named the face of nike's 30th anniversary so, of uh-huh. teachers do it you saw that right and then you got a whole slew of people that are now burning nike shoes good for you i guess you just don't have shoes let's talk about that if you want to burn shoes that's your problem okay you want to be a little kid and throw a fit that is your problem Okay, in a time, we could say that Nike could have done this sooner, yes. Is this an, a business move for them? Absolutely, it is. But seeing what they're doing with Kaepernick and see what they're doing with Serena, I think in general, as a big brand like that who has a lot to lose, I feel like they're doing something good to be able to stand behind someone that the public is not exactly supporting, you know, like majority anyway. So regardless of anything else, we're going to give Nike that, all right? I saw that product. It's infuriating. 
Yeah, like infuriating. Yeah. Like really? Dick Nike supports people who kneel for the anthem. <laughs> At this fucking point. Seriously. Come on. Yeah. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Seriously, you mm-hmm. gotta be a fucking moron they are, to think that that's just what it's about. Mm-hmm. It's that fucking cut and dry. Yeah. yeah. You know what Definitely. I'm saying? Like, there's a meaning behind this shit, and there's real pain mm-hmm. behind this shit. Most importantly. And you're burning a fucking pair of shoes. Yeah. When you go about your fucking day and you got your job and you're doing mm-hmm. thinking about all this other shit, that's what really fucking bothers right. you. Right. Out of all the things that you People could be worried about. Stop watching football. They're just not. Yeah. Exactly. Football to me is the best sport there is. Oh. Um. And what draws you to the game should not be if if that's how you feel about your country and you feel like you should stand for the anthem. Right. Good for you. Stand for the anthem. Right. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But you also need to realize that this is America, mm-hmm. and people have died for these rights to right. be able mm-hmm. to protest and to right. be able to take a knee. Mm-hmm. Stop making it fucking personal. About right. Yourself. It's not about you. Ooh. You have nothing to do with it. Y'all see this shirt? This is M today. Mm-mm. I agree. I agree. Uh, we got to get back to Tyler, the creator, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tyler. Okay. You know? And um, I, I recently saw him perform. I know that Tyler was a big fan of yours growing up, okay. right? And then um, I recall you even reading about you saying, "Oh, this one's about good. I'm ready." Our future, how they pushing boundaries years mm-hmm. ago. Yeah, for sure. And, and you said some great things about them, about them. Um, as a talent, as look, a look, look. Sway is adjusting himself. Body language is changing. He's like, "Oh, I'm about to ask something. I don't know. Should I do it? Should I not? Okay." He's as a group, our yeah. future as a whole. Right. Yeah. What happened with you guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I really did like them. I, I, I thought like, um, I thought their movement was really cool too. Did okay. y'all make music? We didn't make music. Um, but, you know, I just felt like, okay, there's a mutual respect, respect you know, uh-huh. and a lot of the shit that, that ended up happening after that, like the tweet he put out with talking about Shady 15 and why can't people who are close to him tell him that his shit sucks and it's trash and, like, oh okay, my. Listen, man. okay, you don't have to like it, right? and it could really suck, mm-hmm. but being that somebody really was cool to you, mm-hmm. You would expect some kind of reciprocation and just don't what, you, go public with it. Yeah, and what's the necessity? Express your opinion and how much my shit is trash. Right. Okay, so I talk, I chalk it up to them being young and just right. kids. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, all Fair right, enough. I've been there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was dick when I first came out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, At least he understands. Uh, yeah, man. They were. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry if I ever was a dick to you, but uh. I don't think I ever was. Look at Sway, looking at him like, okay, child, thanks for the apology. I waited years for this, boss man, but, you know, thank you. Okay. Yeah, one time, man, but hey, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> we talk about that. Okay. Um, no, man, so I liked him, and, and then Earl Sweatshirt gets in an interview after after Tyler trashes me, and then Earl Sweatshirt, anybody who listens to Eminem is drinking too much Mountain Dew, and, and I'm just like, Really? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what you know does Mountain like, Dew have to do? Because you're just on tour with us. We hung out. Like, we, we kicked it. Right. Like, Why are you talking like, you know about me now? Like, so, Mm-mm-mm. the last straw, like, look, I know a lot of this shit. I could, I, I could come across being very petty. Okay. Yeah. You but are. At a point and time, you are sometimes. Someone has their breaking point. You know right. This is true. So, when Tyler tweeted out the thing about Walk on Water, this fucking song is horrible. I was like, all right. That's enough. Mm. I need to say something now, because Eminem is petty. Stupid. Said yeah. enough is enough. You know? But at the same time, I'm not going to let everybody just keep fucking. I'm not going to be America's punching bag. Right. And motherfuckers just want to think it's cool and safe mm-hmm. to say whatever the fuck they want about it. Did y'all hear that? I'm not gonna let everybody. I'm, he said he's not about to be America's punching bag. I'm not gonna let everybody think it's cool. But most importantly, I'm not gonna let them think it's safe. What I tell y'all, I say it ain't safe, it ain't safe. Y'all seen the thumbnails? Like, it's not safe. Stop messing with Eminem. Leave him alone. I think it shocks people, him, because for all your career, you was the I just don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm, exactly. That can work both ways. Mm-hmm. How so? True. 
because you don't give a fuck, you will fire back at somebody who mm-hmm. said something about you. I picked and chose who to that I wanted to say my piece with. Choose yeah, your battles. A lot of those things were personal. Mm-hmm. But then there's a lot of things that aren't okay. personal and kamikaze. You know, it's just the game and competition. I and the Spirit of the MC. Spirit of the MC, yeah. But, um, you know, with the talented creator thing, man, I, 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 I realize now, and I, I realize when I, when I, when I said it, but I, I, I wasn't like Come in the on. mind frame of, I was angry. Yes. When I said the shit about Tyler. Mm-hmm. The fact of like, every time I saw this kid, like, oh, he's so cool. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I loved his energy. Like everything, you know what I'm saying? Like he was a But fuck. that's what I don't get. Like, what is the insider? I'm trying to understand how is he showing love to so many people but getting that in return. Did y'all have a round table meeting and be like, okay, everybody go after Eminem? Like, wh- what's happening? Is he, or is he, I mean, what's what's going on? Is he the victim or is that something I'm missing? Y'all got some backstories? Leave them in the comments. Dude, like he's super charismatic and shit, but, right. I, but I'm sitting back like, man, at what point, at what point do I have to say something? Mm. That's real. Just to defend myself. And I think that the word that I called him on mm-hmm. the album yes. was on that song. Yes. Was one of the things where I felt like you tried to hit like with her. Yeah, that, that was because in my in my the homophobic in my stuff. quest, yeah, yeah, yeah. In my quest to mm-hmm. hurt him, yes. I realized that I was hurting a lot of other people. Other people, people. that's real. By saying it. And at the time, I was so mad and just whatever. But thank you, Eminem. That's all. That's all people wanted to hear. Okay. In the midst of everything else that was going on on this album and mm-hmm. the things that it took to pull this album together and all that kind of shit, it was one of the things that I kept going back to. Going right. I don't feel right with this. Yeah. Before the album came out, I mm-hmm. had a conversation with Paul and we spun the word back. Yeah. But now I realize people can hear what I'm saying anyways. Hmm. In the case of this, man, I, I feel like just, man, I wish you and Tyler could sit down and... and Sway is such a, he's so diplomatic. I just shot back and he said what he said, because I think that's a special young man and, and he could probably use your mentorship. And mm. he could probably I wonder what he thinks about that. He has to offer as well. I could tell it was different from Joe or some of the other next yeah, it's definitely yeah. different. It's not, it's not, it, it's, it's not as personal. It's mm-hmm. one of those things like, all right, dude, you, mm-hmm. you, you, you deserve a tap now because Ooh. I think you thought it was cool to just because you slid with the other things, mm-hmm. and I didn't say shit. So now you just take me too far. Up to them being young and just kids, man. Right. Like, but at the same time, at what point do I just gotta keep taking this shit? At what point? The, oh, look. What do I know? That's when I paused it. I'm not gonna watch this coming in part four, or am I? I'm so tempted to watch it, but I won't. So let me just let me just continue my commentary because I feel like it's gonna make me wanna watch it right now. And I'm gonna try to save my energy for tomorrow. Um, at one point, does daddy say enough is enough, okay? He said, let me let these, let me take these kids to school. They play too much. Wow, this was an interesting interview. Definitely different from part, part two and part one. Um, it was very long, so I was trying not to interrupt, but he really hit a lot of points. And again, I'm, I'm going to keep going back to the fact that I really respect how introspective he is as a person in general. Because, like, there are just a lot of people that are not willing to admit that they went too far, not willing to admit that they're wrong, not willing to admit what they're feeling at a certain time, especially being of the male gender. Y'all know how that can be. But anyway, I really enjoyed this. If you guys enjoyed it too, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment below other videos you'd like for me to react to. If not a part of our family, definitely subscribe. We'd love to have you. We are having tons of fun on the playground. I'll see you guys manana. Bye. Mm.